Hopefully by the end of this video, we will be able to hatch out some little chicks out of these eggs, so stay tuned to find out. Hey and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about urban gardening and urban homesteading in the suburbs. Today is a very exciting day because I'm going to do something that I have been wanting to do for a very long time, which is to incubate eggs. Now, if you're watching this video, I am really hoping that by the end of it, we are gonna have some brand new little chicks um, instead of a whole bunch of mistakes and what went wrong, but we shall find out. So today I have the incubator behind me. I will take you in um, a little bit more zoomed in and show you which incubator I have, as well as the process of incubating eggs. Now, I do wanna clarify, this is my very first time incubating eggs. I have chickens for eggs, I have chickens for meat, um, but we have never incubated our own eggs before, so hopefully this is going to go well. So about a week ago, I was at Tractor Supply and I got this incubator right here. It is the Pro Series Digital Circulated Air Incubator with the automatic egg turner. So let me tell you why we decided to go with this one. Um, number one, because it has an automatic egg turner, right? So if you are incubating any sort of eggs, you know that you have to turn them um, three or four times a day. I think it's like every four hours you have to turn out all your eggs. And I think we're incubating about 35 eggs and we both work full time um, and I just simply do not have the time um, or the bandwidth to be turning eggs every four hours. So we went with an automatic egg turner. Um, this one is included in the incubator um, and it also has a fan inside, right? So it circulates the air um, inside now, there was one that didn't have it, um, but I was assured by people who incubate eggs that you do want the fan um, inside so that it regulates the temperature and humidity levels a little bit better. So let me take you in and show you exactly what it looks like. Okay, so this is the incubator. Um, as you can see here, it just has the information and then it has this little monitoring system, right? I really like that it measures um, the temperature. It measures how many days until hatching. Um, and then of course this percentage over here is the humidity. So it allows you to change in between the different modes um, to adjust the days to hatch and the temperature. Now this has been on for about four or five hours now and you're supposed to let it run um, for about, I think it's six to eight hours um, according to the instructions. Yeah, here we go there now i did actually test run it yesterday and it was on for about 12 hours just to make sure everything was working properly so i'm going to put in the eggs knowing that it has been sitting here for a little while and a little bit yesterday as well now you do want it to be 100.5 degrees and i've actually read different things about the humidity levels this is at 59 percent the instructions for this actually say that it is supposed to be um, 50 to 60 percent um, while they are incubating but I've seen other places I've seen I've heard other people say online that it is supposed to be a little bit higher I'm gonna leave it at 59 percent just because that is what the manufacturer instructions say um, and then you can also see here these are little um, vents for the humidity to be adjusted they're currently capped and then I've just taken some tape as well um, because they have additional little vents here that allow the humidity to escape and the temperature to drop and I've noticed that um, in order to get the humidity up to that level um, it is just necessary to kind of block off some of the ones over here there's some still open so I just kind of played with it until I got the proper humidity I also put some water in here in the filling hole number one and then on the other side of it, it has filling hole number two, which you're only supposed to use to really increase the humidity. Um, it is somewhere on this side actually, um, over here, but you're only really supposed to use that during the last, I think, three days of hatching. Okay, so we'll be incubating 35 eggs. Um, all of these are going to be mixed breed eggs, right? So we have um, some Easter egg here, and we do have a bunch of different um, chicken breeds in our chicken coop and then all of these eggs are actually going to produce mixed breed babies because we have a red ranger chicken and no red ranger hens all of our hens are either um, easter eggers americanas speckled sussex cinnamon queens and black sex link okay so then i am going to just open this up now when i open this up the temperature is going to drop and this little red light here is going to start flashing but that's okay because when i put it back it'll regulate itself again now i'm going to take my eggs and I am going to put them with the small side pointing down, um, very important, so that as they grow, they have room on the top of the egg to actually breathe and, and peck themselves out. So I'm gonna put all of those um, facing downward. You can tell that the, the egg turner has been going on for a little bit. 
turning itself everywhere and this will just continue to move really slowly now i did not wash these before i'm placing them in what i did was i just kind of cleaned them off softly with the towel um, but you can see that some of them still have some browning on them right some dirt and stuff um, i tried to wash them or i sorry i tried to wipe them off as best as i could but everywhere that i had read online um, and everyone that i spoke to said to not wash off the eggs before you incubate them so these are staying in just like that all right so we have 35 eggs in the incubator we're gonna take this part the top part and put it back on um, now it's really important that you don't let any of these wires touch anything inside the box right so that's gonna stay just very very carefully connected there and you can see how the temperature did drop and now it's at 82 degrees um, but it will continue going up until it gets to about 100.5 and the humidity will continue going up as well if the humidity does not continue going up um, to the level i want it at then i will just add more water through the fill channels at the bottom okay so today is day um, nine so i candled the eggs last night i used my little candling flashlight thing here um, that came with the incubator um, we did get rid of quite a few that did not look like they were fertilized they had no veins in them or anything but we got so many i think there's probably um like 20 something or so that actually had little veins inside them so i'm really excited they look like they had you know something developing um i didn't film it last night because it was you know just really late but i'm going to be very careful i'm going to open up the incubator one more time so that i can take one of them into um into the bathroom it has to be in a really dark place and i can film it for you guys all right so you see how this dark mass here um, is where the chick is developing and then throughout i don't think you can see it it's very faint even from here um, but it has like little veins coming down on this side and you can see that there's veins all throughout this darkened area and right here there's like a an even darker area so i'm pretty sure and granted i've never done this before but from all the pictures this is what it's supposed to look like and it does have little spider veins coming all through all throughout you guys, I am so excited. We woke up this morning and there's a little baby chick inside of our incubator. Oh my God. So today's actually day 18 since I put the eggs in our incubator, um, which they're not supposed to be born so early, right? It's supposed to be day 21. I'm not sure exactly what happened. If they had maybe, you know, been sat on by the, the hen beforehand, I'm not sure what happened. This is the first time incubating eggs, um, but it's day three. So yesterday, well, sorry, yesterday was day three. And so right before I set them in lockdown, right, which is where you increase the humidity and you don't open the incubator anymore to candle the eggs. Right before that, I went to candle the eggs. Um, I took them into the laundry room. I was candling some of the eggs and I heard little chirps coming from inside one of the eggs. Um, and one of them was actually already cracked, right? So I thought originally um, when it was cracked that, you know, it had moved or dropped it or I had dropped it or something. I'm not sure. Um, but then I heard the little chirps coming from there and I realized it was already starting to hatch. Needless to say, I spent all yesterday watching the incubator and nothing happened. So we went to sleep, um, still hearing those chirps coming from inside the incubator. And then we woke up this morning, this happened. So we actually have another three or four eggs that have cracks in them um, that I can see the chick trying to peck its way out. Um, I think it's probably going to take another day before we actually have multiple chicks. I'm letting this one stay inside the incubator um, until she or he is all nice and fluffy and then we will set up the brooder and put them in the brooder. Alright, so here is our brooder setup with our five chickies so far. They have their food, they have their water, they've made a mess of the food container already, so I've definitely seen them pecking their way around the box, but they're up and doing really, really well. Good morning, you guys. I just woke up. So last night, I took five baby chicks and put them in the brooder. So yesterday was actually day 18, but five ended up hatching out. Yesterday, um, we left them in the brooder box basically the entire day. Um, they, they were kind of born you know, throughout the day, they hatched throughout the day. And then by the end of the night, um, most of them were all like, or actually all of them were all nice and fluffy. Um, I took all the ones that had hatched yesterday, I put them in our brooder box, 
and there were still a whole bunch that had cracks um, on the eggs that you know you could hear them chirping inside the eggs so we went to sleep like that with our five in the brooder box and now we have a whole bunch more that were born overnight um, i just woke up and we had six already and it's been like 10 or 15 minutes i'm making some coffee now um, and we had two more that were just hatched out oh my god i'm just gonna open the incubator really quickly i don't want to lose too much of the humidity but i want to show you guys tell me those aren't adorable you can see we have oh one black one they are like all stumbling over each other they are so cute that one was the one that just hatched out the one that's like struggling to walk right now oh my goodness they're so cute we do have this one. Oh, and of course milo's no stop goodness he is like ready to go where is my chicken so that one over there in the corner um that one just hatched out also but he's kind of like or she is is really not getting up the same way as the other one is that just hatched out so I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, that one's just been like laying there. It is moving. It's not, you know, it's not dead or anything, but I'm not sure exactly what happened. So I'm just gonna close this back up. I haven't opened it all morning, except to get all of the shells out of there. And as you can see, there are still more shells being broken and new chickies are hatching out as we speak. Oh my goodness. All right, so we have successfully hatched chicks. So we have 20 chicks in our brooder right now. Um, it was about day 18 when they started hatching and they are doing really, really well. They are so cute and fluffy. So we hatched 20 chicks. Um, I am going to give you a rundown of our actual numbers. We put 35 chicks or 35 eggs in the incubator um, and we ended up with 20. We had, I think it was 10 of those eggs were not fertile. So when we, when we candled them, um, we realized like the yolk and, and all the liquid and stuff was kind of just floating around. Um, so those eggs ended up not being fertile. And interestingly enough, the only ones that were not fertile, they all looked like the same eggs, right? Like they came from the same chicken. So we have multiple different breeds of chickens in our chicken coop, right? So this, these chicks right here, as you can see, um, whoop, it has like little interesting color markings. Ah, here you go. Ah. Um, they are actually mixed breed chicks. All right, which is fine um, because we're not using them for like any specific purpose. Um, really incubating chicks this time was to make sure that we could do it. We could incubate chicks successfully um, so that when we are raising meat chickens, we have a sustainable meat source. So really that was the point of this. Um, so we had 10 eggs not be fertile, which was interesting that they were all, it looked like they were all from the same chicken. Um, so it looks like, so it would seem like our rooster for some reason does not like that chicken. In the future, if we ever do incubate these eggs again, um, which I don't see as a likely thing moving forward, um, because we have chickens specifically for meat, we have Plymouth Bard Rocks for meat. Um, but if we do end up incubating these ones ever again, I will probably stay away from those eggs that we ended up tossing out about 10 of them. So that came down to about 25 eggs in the incubator. Um, one of them had like this, um, like this red ring around it, which is like a bacteria ring or something. So we had to actually toss that one so that it didn't explode or go bad inside the incubator. Um, so that was 24. One of our chicks um, ended up dying inside of the egg right so she was trying to get out here she was trying to get out for a while um couldn't seem to get out it was it was less than 24 hours and i've read online um that you're really not supposed to help them unless it's been a substantial amount of time that they've been trying to get out of their egg um, for multiple reasons. One, because they can be underdeveloped. You know, even if they start trying to hatch, they really do need the entire time in the egg to fully develop. And two, also because, you know, the process of getting out of the egg um, ensures that they are strong enough to survive later on in life. So after, I think it was maybe close to a day or so, um, I noticed that maybe about an hour after she, you know, or he stopped kind of pecking, there was no more movement. Up until that point, there had been a lot of movement, so I wasn't super concerned, um, but there had been no more movement, so I went in and I was trying to assist, um, and that, that chick actually was already dead inside the egg. Um, so that was down one, and then we had um, another one in the, in the actual 
brooder that she ended up drowning. I found her, I don't know if she fell asleep um, inside the brooder and then laid her head inside the watering thing um, or whatever. But other than that, none of the other ones have, you know, have had that issue. Um, so that one ended up drowning. She was completely wet, so I ended up removing her from the brooder. And then we had one egg that did not hatch. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't hatch. I didn't open it or anything like that. I just left it for a couple days, you know, after the rest of them had hatched. And for some reason that one didn't hatch but overall i mean if you're not counting the ones that were not fertile right for un infertile eggs are not going to hatch regardless of what you do but if you're not counting the infertile eggs um, we're at 24 eggs and we had and and currently we have 20 chicks um, so i'm really happy with our 20 chicks they are all mixed colors some are black some are um, white with little stripes they are really really cute um, we will either be donating them to like an agricultural program um, or at the livestock auction or something like that i'm not sure what we'll do with them yet but i don't think we're gonna keep them um, just because whoop, ah, she is very feisty right now she tried to jump herself off of the countertop um but so yeah i mean but so we will but we will likely not be keeping these ones um so it was just really a trial run we did learn a lot um we learned how to candle eggs which is really interesting we candled at about i think it was day seven or day eight um and then we candled um again at day 14 and we candled again right before lockdown um it actually happened that when i went to candle the very last time one of the eggs was already chirping inside the egg you can hear it and there was a crack in the egg so i'm not sure exactly how scientific you're supposed to be with this um but that egg ended up hatching out the very next day we went to sleep and she was tripping inside the egg and then we woke up and there was a chicken in our kitchen inside the incubator um it was it was really interesting to watch you know this process and watch all the chicks being born um don't eat that ew Ooh. okay um it was definitely it was definitely a really interesting process to watch all the chicks being born um, just to see how they're born you know i've never seen chickens hatch like that but then also to learn you know to learn to candle the eggs to learn to identify um, signs of a bad egg remove them from the incubator and just the overall process so i mean when i was what so when i was actually trying to get you know information on candling eggs and that kind of thing it's been a little bit of a mission i know that you know hatching out your own chicks is a common thing you know among farmers or urban farmers or whatever you want to call it but there was surprisingly little information for some of the questions that i had um, i just wanted to make this video um, just as motivation that you know it's really not as difficult as it seemed it was something that i've been anticipating for a while now um we bought the incubator which i was super super excited about um but it's it really like they basically took care of themselves the most um, the most work that I had to do was making sure that the, humidity, that the humidity levels stayed consistent inside the incubator. I will say though that I am extraordinarily glad I got the automatic egg turner because um, it would have just been not possible to go and turn the eggs several times a day. I think you have to turn them like every four hours or so. Um, we did get an incubator that has the automatic egg turner and it has like a, a fan or a heat a controlled environment or something like that i will link the exact incubator that we have in the description below but i will say that you know it's not nearly as complicated as i thought it was going to be um, there were a couple times where the humidity levels dropped in which case i just took a turkey baster um, full of water and i you know poured water back into the base of the um, of the incubator in the little fill holes so i mean that was pretty much the extent of the work that we had to do and then just waiting until the chicks could be removed um, once they're all nice and fluffy and getting them into the brooder box Overall, I'm really happy with how this process went. You know, our chicks are well, alive and <laughs> jumping all over the place. Um, they're really healthy. So, I mean, definitely um, it's worth it to incubate your own eggs instead of buying chicks from the hatchery. You know, when we bought chicks from the hatchery, um, I, I know I shared with you guys, you know, our meat chickens, we bought them from a hatchery and a lot of them ended up dying. There were some dead upon arrival at the post office. And then we actually had a lot you know die which was not a fun experience i mean i know it's part of raising chickens chickens die but to have that many chicks die at once you know especially the kids getting attached to these chickens um it was just you know even myself i ended up crying because you know the first chick that died i was completely not expecting that so definitely these chicks that we raised out ourselves are much healthier you can tell the difference you know just at a day or two um it took our chicks that we we raised from the hatchery it took them a good two weeks to be lively um even with you know unflavored pedialyte even with honey water all of that but these chicks are like 
after the first, I think it's three or four days now, they are popping around and just going insane inside the Ruder Rocks. So if you like this video, um, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm definitely not an expert at this, but speaking from somebody who you know just went through this process for the very first time um, and found some really interesting information you know, on the internet not to be quite as consistent, feel free to ask any questions you might have and I will try to you know, ease your anxieties about hatching chicks. But overall, I was so excited um, to see all our little baby chicks be born and find out that this was such a great and easy experience. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.